folks and welcome back to Four Corners of the Galley. I'm your host Pete Bo, and you're joining me on another edition of our Atlanta Robin season. This year we're uh, tracking Atlanta Robin season week by week and this week we're on episode two Sporting Waves. So without further ado let's just kick this right off. So I'm gonna just come off the top and just say it's official Atlanta is the smartest show on television. I mean this episode was just a defining moment and how smart and intelligent the show is and how they are subbing and putting some blue messages in there that is so slick and so smart it is absolutely ridiculous. So this episode starts off just like episode one where you're kind of in the middle of an uh, ongoing lick or you know at this point it's actually a, uh, it's a deal. So you know Al Paperboy goes to see his plug and uh, he goes to see his plug to get, to get a re-up. And he's talking about all the different stuff he says. He has to need some molly. He's talking to his boy, yeah, yeah. He's like, all right, no problem, no problem. He starts telling him about, uh, he needs some more kush. He's like, yeah, I got you. And then he turns around and goes, my bad, folks. I'm, I'm really sorry. And his plug ends up robbing him when he's trying to pick up some supplies for himself. <laughs> and then it just gets even better. The plug's telling him, my bad, man, you know, this is, I really need this, and uh, I'm going to need your car keys because I don't need you following me. And uh, I would give you a ride, but you might shoot me. <laughs> I mean, the, 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 the back and forth dialogue between him and Paperboy is just crazy. And Paperboy trying to get out. He's got the child lock on. He's got to go through the door only for him to get left there. And the dude to say, I'll pay you back, and then he bounces out. What a great start to the show. Definitely keeps with the Robin theme, keeps it showing that this is Robin season, that anything can basically happen at any point. So it basically goes to the next day, or you think it's the next day, and Earn and Al Paperboy are actually at uh, kind of like a Spotify, Apple Music, or one of those social media sites that, you know, does music. And they're there, I guess, to help promote Paperboy's career and his new mixtape. So they get to this place, and from the start, everything is just weird awkward and uh, just straight out crazy. So they're having this conversation. I was telling Ern about his events that happened, transpired. He says if he catches him, he's going to have to pistol whip him. <laughs> Basically just on principles, he needs a pistol whipping. You got the employees just kind of listening. She's got this face like, oh my goodness, you can't believe what she's hearing. <laughs> and it's a great back and forth between the two of them. They go into this meeting to meet with this guy. <laughs> this is when this thing just takes a, just a funny funny smart writing so they meet this gentleman named Pete Savage and he tells him I'm 35 Savage and you got one of the dudes in the back oh we're gonna call you 36 Savage next year and oh man it's so bad he's offering organic food he's like we got gluten free no problem so they're coming to show off their new work so he goes you got your stuff for him yeah so he breaks out a CD and the first thing he goes oh uh, we don't have a disc drive here we're all it's all connected, it's all digital, and he's like, he's like oh, all right, and so he's like, why don't you email it to him? And then that's when he gets, when he drops a dime right here, and he goes, yeah, uh, Savage Beast at Hotmail. <laughs> that might be one of the best ones ever. Whoever the heck is using Hotmail in 2018, uh, that needs to go. <laughs> yeah, so you get that. He gets the file, and all this talk about this highly integrated technical system, and the thing doesn't even work. <laughs> So they can't get nothing going. The awkwardness is just building to another level. They end up leaving the room and they're going to do. Uh, Paperboy goes into the radio station to do a couple of radio hits so he can like promote the station and promote the rap mix. And the guy's telling him to enthusiasm him and he doesn't even care. But at the same time, Ern's sitting there eating like a bag of something. And you got the entire staff of this place literally just staring at these guys. Like, it's just so crazy. The subliminal message they put there that. These dudes from the street, and they're just, and they're like, these people are fascinated, and they're treating them like some just crazy stuff. I mean, what he is throwing out there and the message he's giving, it's just nuts. It cuts to the next scene, and you actually get a little throwback from season one where you get the Beebs, and the Beebs in a room cutting it up, being the Beebs, of course, and he's killing the room and taking it all down, and he's doing his thing, and they're just staring at him like, okay, whatever. And then they meet this other gentleman who's called Clark County. And he's kind of like, uh, uh, you know, like these new, new, new age rappers, like the little Uzi, the ones where they have the hot little songs, the beats, and they're talking to him. He's all funny, and you know, there's later stuff that comes part of. At first, you just meet this Clark County guy, and you know, he's they're joking and chopping it up and having a little conversation, and then the Pete guy shows up and the manager, and then 
as Paperboy walks away because they're ready for him, Ern just kind of stuck in this like circle. He doesn't really know what to say, and they're like, having this conversation. I love the way that Ern just kind of backtracks right out. He's like, okay, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm going to just move myself back. And he goes. So you get to this point where Paperboy's up there, and he's about to do a showcase. He's about to sing a song and then get it going, and he's trying to get the crowd hyped. And they're literally just staring at him like, it, I mean, man, just the imaging alone in this segment and this thing is so powerful and so precise trying to show you what it feels like. I mean, it is beautifully written. You got the one gentleman down there sitting there eating a banana. I mean, crazy the way that they are projecting this. I absolutely love it. So <laughs> I was up there and he's trying to get himself hyped up and get himself going. And everybody's just staring at him. He's like, man, forget this. <laughs> he just walks off stage, has the mic, and he's out. <laughs> he's like, done. I'm done with this wild place. I'm out. So he leaves. So you cut to basically like, uh, I, they really don't tell you days or what's going on. But back at the back at uh, Paperboy's house. And Paperboy and uh, and Al are and Erna are just chilling there. And then uh, Darius rolls up, and he rolls up with a package and says, here you go. And this is the first connecting tissue we've had since episode one, where, where you actually have something that pays off in this season, where in the Streisand effect, uh, Darius and Erna go on a little adventure. They go off to see some things, and Erna's trying to get trying to double his money so Darius takes him on this wild adventure where they start trading up on dirt certain things and he ends up with this blue nose uh, pit bull at the end and he gives it to this breeder so they can make puppies that ends the whole thing you never know well Darius comes up with a package and he's got about four thousand dollars for that come up that he did for him and he's now got money and Ern's blown away at the same time you get your boy Tracy come in who I don't know who came off better in these first two, either Cat or this gentleman, uh, Mr. Chris Davis, who is killing it as Tracy, because he he takes over this episode. We'll get to him shortly. So he comes in, tells um, and they tell he tells Ern that he could double his money. He does it on his little gift card scam he's got going. It's for the mall. He's like, look, man, I'm gonna go to the mall and uh, check this out. So at this point in the show, the guys split up in two groups. So you got you got Ern. And Tracy about to go on their adventure to the mall, and we about to have some fun with that. But then the other adventure that's going on is after uh, Al Paperboy gets <laughs> gets robbed by his plug, he needs to find a new plug. So Derry says we got a couple options. So we're gonna start on this one. We're gonna go their way. So <laughs> so Darius and, uh, and and Paperboy go to their first the first plug, and they they checking out the bottles, and he's asking about all the different flavors, and he's smelling he's smelling the Kush smell, and he's like, yeah, man, this is the business. Oh, we can do this. He's like, yeah, we can work this out. At the same time, you got your boy over here with his phone up, trying to take sneaking pictures. <laughs> and he's like, can you just take a picture of me? He's like, no, don't worry about it. Then he goes off in the corner and takes like a corner shot, posts it on the gram while they're sitting there. <laughs> I mean, that was, just, that was just too much. He's like, no, they just get up and leave. <laughs> Oh, that was great. Then the next time you see him, they go to the they go to plug two, and it's, it's at this dude's house. This white woman's house, big crazy fro, and they're talking to him, and they're they're smoking, and they're doing their thing, and they're they're having a good conversation. And he's like, "Look, man, I'm a huge fan. Don't worry, I got you. Don't worry about it." He's like, "I'm just need a picture." He goes, "What?" And he's just he's like, "Nah, man, I'm just messing with you." He's getting him back for that first guy who he's trying to take care of him, and he took a picture. They work it out. He goes, "Look, man, let me just get your number." Put in my phone. I won't do business on the phone, but you know, just so we can have a contact. He's like, all right. You look. You can see. Paper, what is that? Like, I don't know about giving my number. He gives it to him. No big deal. They walk out. They floating. They feeling good. They moving on. And then they get to the car. <laughs> the minute they get to the car, and then he sits there. He gets hit on a text message saying, "Good to meet you, bro." You don't think nothing. And he drops the video, and it's old boy's girlfriend playing an acoustic version of Paperboy's hit song. And he's like, what's this, man? He's like, oh, you know, acoustic girls. They, they love that stuff. All the college girls love that stuff. So he's like, nah, 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 no. Then they having a conversation, and lo and behold, he puts up in a group text, and they start talking. Why are you not even talking? <laughs> I love that. He's like, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> he just tosses the whole phone out. Man, I'm telling you, that is ingenious. There's nothing worse than a group text, especially a group text you do not want to be in. The greatest feature Apple did was putting that mute button on a group text that you try not to be in and you're stuck in no matter what. 
That was great. So they got that. They go on their fun little plug adventure. At the same time, you got my boy Tracy and and Earn going to the mall to pick up some stuff. Tracy said he got to go pick up some shoes. So they roll into a shoe store. They they start having a dialogue conversation about his interview, how he should talk to these people so he can get a job. He's giving them advice. They're having this great dialogue. He goes, all right, so you're going to use your card? He goes, man, I'm going to use my card. I'm going to take these. I got a no chase policy. I'm going to walk right out with these bad boys. Like, what? <laughs> what happens? And Tracy just walked right out with the shoes. <laughs> so you don't see Tracy again. Ern just look at him and walk out. Then Ern's walking around the mall. He goes into the store, picks himself up a pair of shoes. He's feeling all good. He's, he's got this little gift card that he just got from Tracy. He's feeling great. And then he's walking through. Out of nowhere, he gets a text message from Tracy telling him, look, they on to us. You got 20 minutes. <laughs> All of a sudden, you clip to Earn running with all these bags in his hand, coming out the mall looking for Tracy. And Tracy's like, man, I'm in my interview. What you talking about? <laughs> so Earn has to take his butt and walk all the way back to Paperboy's house with all this stuff he's got. Or get on the bus and go and track it all the way back because he's got to get back to where he goes. So then Tracy goes to his interview. And before they get there... In the beginning when they're having this thing, this whole sporting waves, they're having this huge dialogue about tracing his waves. And he's telling them he's got the flyest waves and you can't, you ain't got none of my waves. You ain't never going to see it. Darius trying to get a peek out of it. They just messing back and forth. They're having this great dialogue. He gets there. He still got the, he still got the do-rag on so you don't see it yet. But he's, he's confident. He's feeling pumped. The minute they clip to him sitting down in that chair and interviewing, he's got some of the flies ways. I swear it was the Temptations of David Ruffin right there. That those ways were some old school classic ways. I mean that was some that was some classic classic hairstyle right there. That was that was hilarious. And then you know he does all that, puts his waves on for him, and he still doesn't get the job. And of course Trace ain't gonna leave without saying a word. So he comes storming out talking about KKK this place, and he's he's out. <laughs> You're just like okay. From those scenes alone, from Mr. Chris Davis, Tracy is early contender for MVP this season. I mean, a let alone. That man is just killing every scene he's in. What I'm hoping for is there's some scene where at some point Paperboy maybe gets a gets offered a contract or something like that nature. He's gonna go to some big some uh, big record label and he has to take he takes Tracy with him to make sure the contract goes right so Tracy can make sure he handles it because that would be just a perfect scenario having Tracy has behind him because Aaron gonna be he not gonna let he's gonna let them run all over him <laughs> and Tracy can make sure that everything gets handled right. That's what I'm hoping for. I don't know. Let's hope that happens. So you cut back to the guys, Earn's there, he's rolling in, he's like, man, I'm going to kill Tracy, he left me, <laughs> they laughing because he got all these bags and sound, they sit down, they smoking, they getting their little groove on, <laughs> and then up pops on the screen, and it's the Clark County rapper busting out some Yoo-Hoo song, rapping about you. <laughs> Paperboy's like, man, I hate this, and all you see is from Earn, he's like, this is great, <laughs> it just shows you like that, basically like a... a, a of, of basically ripping on new style hip hop and how everything is just a single word repeated a thousand times and there's no there's no education or dialect anymore. The classic hip hop is dead. And that that's kind of what I got out of it. I mean, wow. We're two episodes in. This show is on fire. Every episode, I don't know what to expect and I love it. This thing it brings a new flavor and a new just greatness every week. Gotta say. Off to a great start. Cannot wait for the rest of the episode. Sporting Waves. Tracy the MVP. Let's go. All right, folks. Well, there you have it. That's episode two. I'd like to thank you for joining this week. Please, uh, I don't know if you guys are watching Unsolved. Unsolved, the merger, Biggie and Tupac. I am. I'm reviewing each episode. Got videos here and here. And also still doing Roland in case you missed last week. Till next time, guys. Good night, Ted.